Now, when working with higher voltages, like um, like mains current, you have to let the plates condition before they'll really start functioning as a diode. So I have right here. I got a hundred watt light bulb, and basically all that does is it limits the current because you don't want to just take your house current and short it out through uh, an electrolyte. Um, it's not a good idea. I mean, you're going to blow a fuse, most likely. And uh, it's just not necessary. So, this is a good idea. Instead of using some kind of expensive resistor, you just put a light bulb in series. So, right here, I've got two aluminum plates. One aluminum plate here, and one aluminum plate here. Uh, there's no rectification from the house current. It's just AC in. That's it. So we're going to try to make a rectifier out of this. What happens is the, um, I don't know, the electricity, it helps to form an oxide layer on the aluminum. And the oxide layer only passes one polarity of current. So I'm going to show you how this works. Turn the switch on. And you should slowly start to see the light bulb dimming you notice there's bubbles coming off of one of the plates that should not happen once the the oxide layer forms you see the light slowly getting dimmer because both plates are diodes essentially no current should pass because you have an AC wave it keeps alternating back and forth between positive and negative every time it goes positive the plate the oxide layer on the aluminum plate is gonna block it and since they're both aluminum every time the wave flips it just blocks it because it keeps going positive and it's never gonna pass a positive current so you basically have two diodes facing each other see the lights getting dimmer because it's not passing current or it's only passing a very small amount of current you figure I'm sure this is not a hundred percent efficient I'm sure if you get really good or I'm sure if you get different quality aluminum or different alloys of aluminum that one will pass current and one won't and the uh, the tolerance on this, I'm not sure what the tolerance is, but you can see, look at, that bulb is pretty much out. I'll turn off the lights. That didn't really help, but you'll see how bright the bulb is once I turn it on full blast. And you see there's really no bubbles there. There's only very, a couple bubbles, a small amount. And you figure there's, there's 100 watts of electricity going into here. So, it's blocking at least an amp of current at a hundred and some odd volts. I think my current, I think the voltage in my house is about 113 volts. That's pretty impressive for a simple sheet of aluminum to be able to block something like 100 watts of power. And it's, and it's really cool because, like, I'll see if I can zoom in on this, but some sort of bizarre like flashing occurs on the aluminum. And I'll see if I can pick that up. See those little twinkles? It's like the aluminum starts glittering. I don't know if it's happening on the other plate. But it's happening on this one. There's like weird glitterings. Now in a uh, in a HHO, in a, a water fuel cell, this might be a problem because I don't know if these little sparks can actually ignite the gas. So that might not be good. So it might be good to just have a little diode chamber where you have one rectifier like this on the end and it rectifies all the current.
and you don't have to worry. You just vent the gas that comes out of there. And there's really no gas coming off of here. I mean, that is so negligible. For 100 watts of power. And you see the light bulb is completely out. See that? It's completely out. I mean, I'm sure there's a small leakage current going through there, but more or less. There you have it. It's, it's blocking all of the current. 